Hey there, folks. BQ here. And it is the uh, 31st of August, 2017. And this is one of two video entries that I'm going to be doing today at the King of the Mound podcast YouTube channel. So Global Force Wrestling fans, please hit that subscribe button. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm citing Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer. Are you calling me a liar? So apparently Alberto Albatron, the rumor is, is that uh, he'll be making his return in the November tapings. So if I had to go with my gut when this whole thing was going on, when he was suspended recently, I didn't think they were going to get rid of him completely. Because I've said a lot of times on, on the show and on the channel, I thought ever since he's been at GFW that his work has been very, very good. I don't like, I wasn't a big fan of the Superman push that, you know, um, him steamrolling LAX every week. He didn't have a very good match with Magnus. And I want to say he had a match with Chris Adonis. I could I could be totally wrong. I remember there's one other match I didn't totally care for. But uh, for the most part, I, I thought he's been doing a really good job with the company. And I didn't think it was uh, necessarily a bad thing to have him around because he, he gets a crowd reaction, whether good or bad, but he gets a reaction. And I think there's something to be said for someone who's who comes from uh, wrestling in front of thousands of people because he has a different level of charisma that he's able to bring with him to the ring that that can wake up the impact impact zone a little bit as opposed to someone who's used to performing strictly there or in front of you know smaller indie crowds or whatever so the idea is to bring him back as a heel you know this is again dave Meltzer talking are you calling me a liar uh, bring him back as a heel and you know basically uh turn on the company for giving up on him and stripping him of the title now, I've said this the last couple of weeks. I really feel they're going towards a direction where they're trying to base, rea uh, I, sh I shouldn't say base it, but they're trying to factor reality into the storylines instead of becoming just a male soap opera, so, so to speak. They're taking whatever's going on outside the company with a certain worker and kind of trying to carry it over into the show a little. So if this were to be a storyline, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I think it would be, I think it would be cool. Um, now I didn't listen to Eli Drake, uh, to his, um, conference call today, but from what I understand, and I don't know if it was, uh, he was in character or not, but said that he didn't feel that he should, he should bring him back. There was a live event where he cut the promo on him. So what I'm thinking here, I think, uh, I, I do think Eli Drake is going to have the title for the foreseeable future. Even if they bring El Patron back, he's, he's a top heel. I don't, I don't see a situation where he could um, win the title back. I don't see them putting the title back on him because some of the drama is, is going to be pretty fresh for a while. But I think he can have a pretty sizable run as a top heel, maybe with LAX. And I think an Eli Drake face turn um, is possible. The thing is, I've, I've already said I think Eli Drake is going to have the longest title run. I think... I, he's my pick to break the Bobby Roode record because someone has to. I'm sure they're going to break that record. I think he's the right guy for it. Can he sustain a heel run for that long, though? I can see a situation where um, he perhaps becomes the top babyface because what's, what's going to happen with Eli Drake? He's a, he's a tremendous heel. We all love his work, but he's, he's so popular and he's he's going to hit that in the point of no return. So when he eventually becomes a baby face, he is going to be one forever. It's never going to go away. Now, if he maintains that, that uh, quick wit and you know, the way that he is, you know, not so cowardly, obviously, but um, that wit and humor, I think he can uh, be a very effective baby face. You know, they, they don't have to water him down by any means. So, that's the rumor, guys. Um, they're talking about El Patron coming back in November at the tapings after Bound for Glory. Maybe he shows up at Bound for Glory and, uh, you know, it's the beginning of a story. So what do you guys think? Are you, uh, if this is the situation, are you looking forward to that possible storyline or do you just not want him back, period? So this is BQ. It's the King of the Mountain podcast. Hit that subscribe button and can't wait to read your comments.